Okay, so this is still happening. Um, I want to show you the trigger wheel on the K24. I've got the, I just set the valve lash. I should have done that before. That was probably what the tick was, I hope. Um, just some loose valves. Uh, so there was a couple of those that were out of spec pretty badly. Um, I have the front of the cover off. I'm going to set the going to set the intake timing gear back to where it's supposed to be because I'm going to try to control VVT. We'll see if that's going to work for me. Um, but what I wanted to show you is how I'm going to modify the trigger wheels. So this is the OEM trigger wheel. It's got 12 equally spaced. Let's see if I can show you this. 12 equally spaced uh, teeth on it and then there are two spaced close together right here. You can see those hopefully. Um, the engine sitting at top dead center and the, uh, the OEM crank position sensor sits like right here. So right where my finger is. So it's like right before the first of the double teeth. Um, so I think what I want to do, maybe let's see. How do I want to do this? So I think you want to have the missing tooth uh, like 90 degrees away with uh, the Speedino. I don't know if it makes much difference really, but I'm going to put the missing tooth about 90 degrees away. So if the sensor normally sits here and the engine rotates this way, so it's going to see the teeth in this order, uh, I'm going to take this one off and then my missing tooth going to be the one right at the top here I think. So right by the T where it says outside. I think I'm going to take that one off. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to do with that one. Um, and here are the here are the teeth on the the light on the intake cam and the exhaust cam. Um, if you remember last time I talked about the exhaust teeth, it's got, I can show you this. It's got one, two, three, four big teeth and then you can see right there at the sensor, maybe you can see it, it's got a big tooth and a small tooth. Um, I'm going to take off all but one of these teeth and so I'm just going to unbolt it, take my grinder and lop those off and you'll see that it's like got an indentation on the back. I might weld those up just so it's a continuous piece of metal. I'm not sure if it's going to make much difference but I don't want it to see that as a gap or something other than a solid piece and it probably wouldn't. Uh, given how this is set up where it's just looking that direction, but I don't really want to take a chance on that. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. I don't know. It doesn't really matter which which uh, toothy you leave. You're going to take four of the five off. It doesn't really matter which tooth you leave, but you don't want it to be in your gap that you make on the crank position sensor. So if you have... You know, if, you, if I'm taking off this tooth, like I said, uh, you want to rotate the engine so it's pointing at that tooth and then come back here and look at which tooth is, you know, pointing at it. You don't want the, the miss, the uh, cam sink tooth to be in the gap of the crank. Um, I think that just causes some issues with... Uh, with how it calculates the, the angles. So I'm going to try to do this and we'll see what happens. Um, and now I'm about ready to put it back together. So I've got the old, clearly I've got this, got in the, <coughs> on the engine stand. Old transmission there. New, in quotes, uh, transmission over there. I had a stuck bolt that was terrible to get out, but I got it eventually. 
Um, so I'll probably do all that. I may take the oil pan off and weld a pipe fitting here on the back for an oil drain. I think now would be a great time to do that. One thing I want to mention is I got a, I've got an oil leak at the oil pan here. I use that uh, this Moto Seal stuff instead of simple, not simple green, ultra gray. Um, this stuff doesn't work very well at all. I wouldn't recommend using this Moto Seal for this. Um, it's actually okay on the timing on the timing cover because it's two machine surfaces, like a you know like a motorcycle crankcase would be. But if you got any inconsistencies in your oil pan rail, it's not going to seal it very well. So hopefully I can fix the oil leaks, get the cam, uh, get the cam and crank wheels modified and get this thing put back together. Alright, here are my modified trigger wheels. This is the crank wheel. Uh, you can see I took, let me put that so you can see it. I took the second tooth that was right next to this one off. And then I took the one that's right in line with the keyway off. And that's the modified crank trigger. And then this is the exhaust cam wheel. I took uh, the two teeth here, one there and one there, and then I left one big one here. Um, I'll put this all back in. You can see I welded up the back because they did have a notch like this. And given that that's a Hall Effect sensor, I didn't want to take the chance of it. You know, I figured if it was solid, it'd be more likely to get a good reading. It probably would have been fine to just grind those off, but that's not what I did. So there you go. 12 minus 1, and then a single cam uh, signal for Mega Squirt or Spadino. Okay, it's dangling. Um, about ready to put this back in. Um, I've got one thing to show you before I do that. I put an oil drain on here. This is just like a half inch nipple on here with this high dollar cast uh, plumbing plug. So this is just a male MP, uh, half inch MPT. Um, so that should give me a lot of options for however I want to run the oil drain. So. The turbo will be up in here, and you'll have plenty of room to get it down over here. I'm thinking it's likely to be closer to the driver's side, so that's what I got. I'm going to see if I can get this thing back in.